Okay, let's get the uh, let's get the heads on. Absolutely. So we've prepared the drum. We've checked all of the parts. So we're ready to replace the snare side drum head first of all. So as we explained when going through the box, um, we've got our snare side 300, which is a three mil clear head designed specifically for the snare side. So we're just going to place the head on the shell. One of the most important things for me, and it's guaranteed that you won't get a good sound unless you do this, is we've got to line up the badge with the badge. I just say, I didn't do it when I first uh, changed my <laughs> snare and I regretted it as it's, soon as I brought it out into the world. It's really important for me, and that's just my problem. I think um, having the logos in line is just one of those psychological things. Um, it sounds better. It sounds better. <laughs> but but really, it, it, it puts me off. I'll be thinking that logo is not straight. And what I really want to be thinking about is what I'm playing. So You'll hear that resonance and go, it's, yeah, it's the head. It, it's, it's, it's really important for us to get this kind of central with that badge. It just means the world is right. So next job, um, once we've got the head on the shell, is we want to take the counter hoop. Now, we want to make sure that we pick the correct counter hoop. So one of the hoops has a space called a snare gate and the other one doesn't. So the batter side head doesn't have the snare gate. The snare side hoop does. Now that is a channel in the counter hoop which allows us to thread our string or strap from the snare wires. Um, so we're going to place this on and make sure that that snare gate is actually in line with the butt plate, which is this piece of hardware here, and the strainer, which is on the other side of the drum. Lovely. Now, when you do this part, are you worried about seating the drum head yet, or is this purely lining everything up? Um, this is just purely lining everything up. Um, and we'll get into seating the head in a bit more detail on the batter side, because we're working with such a thin film mm -hmm. on, this, um, on this particular side of the drum. We don't really have to worry about any sort of pre-stretching or, or bedding in as such. Obviously, we're working with a much thinner film as well, so we don't want to stretch that film mm -hmm. by pushing on it. So at this point, just make sure that logo is straight and make sure that your snare gates are in line with the, uh, the butt plate and the snare drum strainer. Lovely. Once that's on, we can start replacing the tension rods into the hoop. Um, now, at this point, you may want to lubricate the tension rods if you find that they are a little bit stiff or gritty. Um, so especially anybody who's replacing drum heads on, a, on an older drum. Mm -hmm. If it's kind of a new drum out the box, um, then the, the, the tension rods are probably going to be in fairly good nick with very little debris in, in the, the lug inserts here. Mm -hmm. um, but like we did when we detensioned or, or, or untensioned the um, the drum heads when we disassembled the drum. Mm -hmm. We want to use a similar process. So mm -hmm. usually what I will do is just take two tension rods and locate them into the, uh, the, the lug nut or the lug box. And I just want to make sure that the thread is straight and true and just keep them loose for now. Mm -hmm. And basically we're going to repeat the process. Is there any particular process for a 10 or is it a similar similar work? It's a well? similar thing. I mean, with an eight lug drum, you can divide it into, into eight. So mm. it's a nice equal amount with a 10 lug drum. Um, you've, you've got to run kind of more on a diagonal mm. when, you, when you're given the, the numbers. But as long as it's around about each one of the four poles, then, then you're, you're fine. Okay. Like, so it's really just where we're not putting extreme tension or taking out extreme tension from one section to the other. Okay. So you can be very regimental, but as long as you're kind of roughly using opposite tension rods, mm -hmm. then you're absolutely fine. Like you said, just make sure that everything's located, make sure the threads are moving nice and freely. And if you find that they are a little bit gritty, that's the point where you might want to throw some lubricant. Mm -hmm. Usually what I'll do is just dot it on the, um, on the insert part. Mm -hmm. And as you screw the tension rod down, it takes the lubricant into the, into the lug box, okay. rather than spreading it on the top part of the tension rod. And that's not something you need to do overly uh, like consistently? Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those discussions whether or not you use lubricant on tension rods or not and it depends on the condition of the drum mm -hmm. 
obviously if it's been sat for years and years, then you probably want to clean everything and make mm. sure that it, 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 it is kind of movable. Um, the other problem is though, if you over lubricate or you use too light of a grease or a lubricant on the tension rods, mm -hmm. because we're hitting this, the drum is vibrating and they can work loose. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things you've got to be mindful when, when putting lubricant on tension rods like this, you've got to make sure that you don't over lubricant them. Mm -hmm. I think this goes back to the whole ethos of the kit saying, get in, get in touch with your drum essentially, like work out what lugs are the ones that have been worn down. Exactly. If it's a new drum, take care of it from the get go. Yeah. And you'll be, it will, it will do you for, do you for a long while. That's it. That's exactly it. So next step now we've got the tension rods um, located mm -hmm. in the thread. What I want to do is just finger tighten mm -hmm. the tension rods down. So at this point, I'm not going to be using the key. Um, I'm literally going to grab two opposite lugs and I'm going to tension them down just until they're kind of gripping up against the counter hoop. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to work on lug three and four. So we're going to work on the opposites of those. And again, just tension it down finger tight. Mm -hmm. The reason that we're using our hands to do this is that we can, we can feel that each tension rod is around about the same tension mm -hmm. before we start putting half turns and turns using the key. Okay. So it just gives us a good starting point on the drum before we start putting actual tension onto it. Mm. Now, just to mention, while we have the head at low tension on the snare side, you'll notice that we've got two creases here. So these two creases are caused by a dip in the shell. Now that dip in most drum shells on snare drums is absolutely intentional. So this is called your snare bed. And this is just a scallop on the bearing edge, which allows the snare wires to sit more flat and flush against the, the snare side drum head. Okay. There's a number of vintage drums that don't have snare beds, so they require slightly different ways of either tensioning the snare head, or they require a, a, a more specialist wire mm. to kind of sit the, the, the wires flat against that head. But for modern day drums, the majority of modern day drums come with a snare bed pre-cut. Okay. So don't panic as you tension everything down and you've, you, 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 you're you looking and you're thinking, this is exactly the same tension as that. Why is this not holding tension in the drum? It's because there's that dip in the yeah. shell. So obviously the, the, the slightly higher part of the shell here, mm -hmm. um, that is already in contact with the uh, with the head itself. So all I'm going to do is throw again a half turn on each of the tension rods, but I'm going to start with these two that are away from the the snare beds first of all. So name that as lug one, mm -hmm. and let's just put a half turn, and that's a half turn from finger tight. Mm -hmm. So again, we'll move over to the opposite tension rod half turn from finger tight. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go to lug three and lug four over here. Half turn there. And a half turn there. So with this creaking noise we're hearing now, is that something to worry about or is that... No, not boring? at all. There's a few misconceptions about the creaking noise. Some people think it's the head and the, uh, the metal part of the, the, the drum head, the flesh hoop we call it. Um, it sounds like that's kind of parting ways or glues cracking. It's not actually the case. What is happening is it's the film pulling across the edge of the shell. Okay. So you'll get a more pronounced version of it on a wood shell. Mm -hmm. You'll get more of a creak where a metal shell is a little bit more mirror finished for the okay. most part. So you don't tend to get that kind of cracking, a mm -hmm. lot of people will call it. But it's actually just a bit of resistance between the film and the, the edge of the shell. Okay, nothing to worry about then. No, nah, so we can debunk. Debunk that. Perfect. <laughs> Brilliant. So I've put a half turn on those um, four lugs here. Mm -hmm. So the ones that aren't either side of the snare bed. And you can feel that you've already got a, a fair bit of surface tension in there. And that was with a, a half turn. So again, I'm going to add another half turn starting on that first start point. And that just means that we can keep tabs on where we started and where we, mm -hmm. where we finished. Again, there's that creaking or pulling. So again, I put another half turn in. 
I will always go one and a half to two turns on the on the snare side. I mean that that does depend on the the brand of drum. Mm -hmm. So DW, for instance, they use a much finer thread on their tension rods, so you need more turns. Are those are true pitch ones. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you, you have to turn those more mm -hmm. to get the same amount as one full turn on a standard. 8mm tension rod, mm -hmm. but what that means with, with that particular tension rod is you can more accurately tune mm -hmm. um, within a range. You've got a bit more leeway, you can put a full turn in, it doesn't affect the tension that much, but okay. a full turn, a half turn, actually throws a lot of tension in if we're talking about standard 8mm threads. So it's just being mindful of doing it step by step. Mm -hmm. um, and just by following that kind of method and making sure you keep tabs on where where the tension is. Mm -hmm. It's quite difficult when you talk to remember where, you, where you're yeah. at with it. Um, I'm finding that. Yeah, then, then, then you, should be, you should be golden. But like I said, at one and a half to two turns will get you at a fairly good working tension. Feel the tension already, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, then I'm going to move to the snare bed and I'm just going to take this up. The Are same. you still half turning here? or Half turning here as well. Because what we're looking for is kind of full contact between the, uh, the tension rods. I don't know whether you can see this on camera, but you've still got a little bit of a ripple. Um, I'm kind of looking to just get rid of the ripple. And this is just getting us close to the working tension of the, um, of the drum. Obviously, we're going to go in and we're going to fine tune this mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because Dependent on where we want the drum sonically, we might want to take the snare side head up a little bit more or down a little bit more. Um, we can control the resonance of the wires, for example, not just with the tension on the strainer, but we can also control it with the tension on the on the snare side head. So okay. um, as a default setting, though, uh, we've mentioned this before, we'd go tabletop tight, mm -hmm. which is around about um, a turn and a half to two turns. Um, I've heard the trick of uh, you want it to sound like a timbale when you hit it with your finger. Yeah, that's it. But again, if you want that old school like 808 drum mm -hmm. sound that's kind of in with the snarky puppy fans, yeah. um, you might want to detune it completely. But this is the whole point as well. Experiment and see what works for mm -hmm. you. Um, you know, and this, this is one of the exciting things about drums. There's no real right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just if you get to your goal and it's the sound that you want and you've had to do something wacky on the hazy side or the or the batter side as long as it works and the drums playable yep then who are we no wrong answer no exactly and that's the beauty of it so yeah we've got um turn and a half to two turns on these tension rods mm -hmm. um and we've got a nice tension what i do when i'm tuning mine maybe a little trick is wherever i start i leave my hand on that lug keep it gripped <laughs> so i <laughs> Keep a grip for one. Yeah. Also, just a, a physical reference, a visual reference where you start. So when you go around in your triangle, you already, you can work backwards where you started so you don't lose track. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. I mean, there, there is another technique which we haven't used here, but you can, once you've got the drum up to kind of a good low to medium tension, um, rather than going opposite, because we know that we've pulled the drum into tension equally mm -hmm. using opposite tension rods, the next step you can you can actually use a two skip rule. So you basically, if we've got an eight or a ten lug drum, we can actually use the skipping two lug uh, process, which is we we take a lug point and we start, we skip two, and then we go to the next lug point here. Then we skip two, then we go to the next lug point here. Then we skip two. Ah, uh, okay. As long as the, the process brings the head down evenly. Hey, so one, once you're kind of low medium tension, we can do the skip two lug thing. So it means you don't really have to remember where you started. You okay. can just systematically work around the drum and eventually you will, you, you'll tension every single one of those in three turns around the drum. So, okay. Um, Lovely. Well, I think this is a... That's getting there. Sounds like that's a timbal. now. Brilliant. If you found this video useful and you can see yourself using these tips on your snare drum, then please like and subscribe to the GIF Music Drums YouTube channel. I've been Miles and this has been Ben from Evans. Thank you for watching.